What's going on, guys? Bonafide Hustler here with special guest Tanya with Thrifty Treasures. All right, so welcome to the show today. We're talking about how to make money from garage sales. Of course, if you're looking at well, this is episode one or two, this is essentially episode two. We're going to be talking about negotiation. So I have a special guest with here. I mean, here who was with me last week, and this is Tanya from Thrifty Treasures. What's up, Tanya? Oh, nothing. What's going on? Not much. You caught me right after garage sales. And I think I caught you right after garage sales, right? Yes, you did. <laughs> we both went garage sailing. You know, in fact, I'll tell you what it is. Like um, Fridays in Austin, Texas haven't been that good lately. But last week's show with Tanya, she was like, you don't go out Fridays. Fridays are the best. And like, I was like, oh, okay. You know, like yesterday I was like, I'm going to look up Friday garage sales. And 1120 in my bed, I'm like, ooh. I see at least three that I want to go to. I was like, I'll do it. I'll, I'll post my postpone my workout a little bit more, and I'll go to these three. And I found some really good stuff. So I told Tanya what I found, and that's not the point of this show. But <laughs> thank you, Tanya, for kicking me in the you know. You're welcome. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, we have, we live in different parts of Texas, and she might have more opportunities than me. But it's just the uh, right. the motivation of being around someone that's like minded, and it really was like, oh, you know what? Maybe I should look, and I did, and I got out this morning, and my wife was like, wow, you're up early. Like, okay, see you later. <laughs> So anyways, thank you, Tanya. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. So you can find Tanya's channel. It's the first link down below. So that's the very first thing you got to do. Um, if you want to follow someone else as well as myself that does ride-alongs and goes to garage sales and finds a lot of different items than I do as well, mm -hmm. then you got to go check out Tanya's channel. It's a lot of fun. And you've been on YouTube for two years? Oh, years yeah, a couple years now. Okay, so two years, uh, about 4,000 uh, member, members strong, and you crossed 4,000 not too long ago, right? Yes, I did. So exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, Thank you. I don't even know what it felt like to be at four. I just remember getting to a hundred, and I was like, "Oh my God, there's, there's so much opportunity <laughs> here," you know. But yes. uh, four thousand is a lot. I mean, if you put four thousand people in your neighborhood, just like knocking at your door at the same time, that'd be kind of creepy, right? Right. It's a lot of people, if you think about it. Yeah, it's like one time um, not too long ago, I heard Chad say, uh, "Golden Finger Picker." He said fifty people can fit inside a McDonald's lobby, so that kind of gives you an idea, like if how big, how many people that is, right? So like a whole lot of people, right? Yeah, it's a whole lot of people. And you definitely earned it and you've earned it the right way and you've been making great videos. Oh, so thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> so let's get right into negotiation. We assume we sound okay. I need someone in the feed to just tell me we sound okay. If one of us is breathing super hard, then let us know. Because <laughs> every now and then that happens. Um, but let, me, let us know if you can see us well and if you can hear us well. But we'll get right into negotiation. Now, here's the thing about the show. To try to knock out negotiation in an hour is near impossible because there are a lot of tactics that you can use um, to do negotiation, right, Tanya? I mean, it's like a yes. The same tactics you use for negotiation, you can use for other things like sometimes thrift stores and church sales and picking on someone's property, or it's almost like some of the same stuff works in car dealerships, right? Right. Negotiation exactly. is interesting. Um, so we're going to try to cover what we can on this show, but just remember there's more to it. And I do have a special kind of like um, discount on something very important at the very end of the show. I'm going to let you know, but you're going to want to act fast if you want to get on it. So let's talk about negotiation. And um, I thought about this and I was like, how, where does negotiation even start? So before I go to my part of the outline, Tanya, where does negotiation even start to have how do I say it? ammunition on your side where you have the good luck on your side? Where, where does it start for you on a garage sale morning? For me, it starts the moment you get out of your car and you walk up to the sale, right? You want to establish a really good rapport with people who are having the sale. You know, how are you doing? You know, this weather's so nice. Uh, small talk, right? Yep. So you want to let them know that you're friendly and yeah, definitely. Now, when you're coming out of the car, are you dressing up in super nice stuff? Are you like <laughs> rocking the Prada purse? Okay, like I was rocking Bucky t-shirt this morning when I went to the garage sale. So usually just like shorts and jeans and a t-shirt. Okay. Now, you have nicer clothes at home, right? I do. <laughs> but it's just not the time to wear them, right? It is not the time. Not, not, I'm not at a garage sale, no. Okay. So that's what's kind of like interesting about a garage sale is um, you get this first impression kind of opportunity. And a first impression opportunity is really important. Um, it's the difference between sometimes paying up and getting a great deal, right? Yep. You roll up in a really nice car. Let's say you have two cars in your family, sometimes three, 
and one of them is distinctly nicer than the other one. <laughs> and yes, you want to ride around in comfort and you want to, you know, feel good and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, if they, if the people at the garage sale see that you come up with something good or mm -hmm. a better asset than you should be coming up in. Yeah. You don't want to roll up in a Mercedes or a BMW, oh. right? An 88 Mercedes, maybe. Maybe, you know? yeah. <laughs> but you're right. Like, you don't want to be rolling up in the nicer of your two cars or if you have three cars, whatever you have. You right. want to pick a car that, you know, just looks kind of average, you know. Whatever you have that's average, like, just bring it to a garage sale. Um, so it starts with, like Tanya said, it starts with how you dress. You don't want to uh, look the part of someone that has a lot of money. It's very important. Right. Even if you have a lot of money. Um, now, outside of anything else in life, then maybe you do want to kind of dress for like, <laughs> dress to impress, you know, like, a, you know, that kind of stuff, but, uh, yes. or dress for the job that you want, right? Yes. Um, but not in a garage sale. So now, Tanya also hinted on something else that I wanted to say, which was it depends on how approachable you are, too, right? If you come in and you're kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, a little uh, introvert kind of person, right? Or mm -hmm. you just don't get along with people, not get along with people, but you're afraid of the small talk. Tanya, Right. That can really play against you, can it? It really can. I mean, you want you want to definitely talk to people and let them know that you're easygoing and, you know, they're more likely to give you a better deal. Yeah, that's right. So people hear this thing called small talk, Tanya, and if you could define small talk in maybe a sentence or two, what would that be? How are you? How about this weather we're having today? Good, <laughs> we good weather for a garage sale. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Small talk is really good. If, you, if you're cognizant of small talk, you can say something really quickly and it can open up a lot of conversation on their end. And that's essentially what you kind of want to do. So, uh, you know, it's sunny today, isn't it? That's going to be a yes or a no answer. Right. As opposed to like, how do you guys like the weather today? Now they can't be like, no, like, it has to, <laughs> you know, it has to be a sentence or more from their part. Um, yeah, so you kind of want to do open-ended questions. That's important. So if you kind of want to like find the greatest deal and everything like that and stay on, on point with making money, mm -hmm. then maybe ask an open-ended question, uh, be approachable. Don't look like a baller. Um, and just roll up to a garage show confident, be confident, but don't right. be weird. Don't be, yeah, don't be cocky. Weirdo. Don't be like hiding behind the tree and like scoping <laughs> things out. Like don't do those kind of things, right? Come up right. approachable. Um, you don't want to come up also with your hands crossed like this, you know, even mm -hmm. if it's a cold morning, you know, arms out like this. That's a welcoming kind of thing in any culture across the world. Arms mm -hmm. out is kind of a welcoming thing. Arms crossed is a barrier. So think about those simple things like that. Um, yeah. So now let's talk about, um, let's, let's, let's go into really the small talk, um, and how do you balance small talk, Tanya, with with an item that you might like? Like, let me ask you how you do this, because I think we, we a lot of us do this differently. So when you see something that you like, what do you do, like in a garage sale and situation? Um, well, if it's not priced, I'm going to ask how much it is. And if they don't ask, if they don't answer me right away and they're kind of like thinking in their head, if there's nobody else around, I might just kind of set it back down while they're thinking about it to let them know that you know, I'm not super duper interested, right? So just set it down and then wait for them to come back and see what they say. Because yeah. if you're hanging on to it, that says, oh my gosh, I really want this, right? Yeah. And if you really want something real bad, the person on the other side is going, hmm. And if you're setting it down, it's like, oh, you know, I can leave it or take it either way. Right. So so you have to look at the, the psychology of what's going on in a garage sale, right? The psychology of the human psychology that's going on is people are getting rid of their stuff. They don't want to take it back into the house. They also would rather not donate it if they could make some money on it, all right? But the right. end result essentially is they have to get rid of it, right? It's something that mm -hmm. they are not attached to because it's there on the table. It's there on the lawn. It's hanging up on the rope thing in the garage. It's, it's yes. sure, you know? <laughs> They're not attached to it. They don't, they don't wear it enough. You know, they, don't, they haven't touched it in a year or they got a better model, something like that, right? Right. Um, so these are the items that you're going to be commonly finding at garage sales. It's, it, these are items that people are not attached to. Now, occasionally, yes, you're going to come to a garage sale where there's going to be like really cool stuff, high quality stuff, and they're going to have an eBay printout on the oh, item. Oh, yeah, right? And that is so annoying. But just remember that most yes. garage sales are not like that. Um, most garage sales, the, the people are not really looking for super top dollar. They're just looking to move the item and really not just give it away for free, right? Yeah. So that's what's going on, right? Um, I want to mention someone in the feed right now. We got a lot of people in here. We have Adam, Brian Huntsman. We got Lonnie with Garage Flips. What's up, Lonnie? Um, and we got more people in the feed. Let me just say hi to some people. We got Ronnie. 
Hearts Pickers, uh, Patricia, Jason Kreider. Good to see everybody. Um, so I like how you said if you like something, don't 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 uh, bring it close to your body. Really, you don't want it in your hands yeah. at all because possession. How much is that? <laughs> Yeah, like possession is a very important thing. Like human people, people, human beings can pick up on possession type things. Like if you're like, what the hell are you talking about, Bonafide? Well, think about what's really important to people. When you look around and you're like going through a shopping mall or whatever, what do people have in their hands? You know, they have mm -hmm. what they just bought. They're attached to it. They have their cell phones in their hands. They have a drink, right, to, to uh, you know, make them feel good just for a quick second because they're dehydrated, right? But whatever's mm -hmm. in their hands is very near and dear to them, right? It's important. Yes. So if you've got something that's in your hand and you're in a garage, you're like, how much is this thing? Like, how much is this thing? Like, you're almost doing yourself a disservice because now they understand that you want that thing, right? Right. And uh, you got to play the game the reverse way, which is like, I don't want this, but I do want this. <laughs> Does that make sense, Tanya? Completely. <laughs> So everyone does it a kind of a, a weird way. You don't want to be a weirdo when you do it. You kind of want to, you know, peruse. So get really good at perusing and not showing like your hand. It's almost like when you play poker. Poker, you know, exactly. Your, your your cards there. Even though you might have something really good, you know, you just don't want to play that hand like super quick. Yes. Um, now you play the hand quicker as competition is around you you do you have to hustle right really fast <laughs> yeah you kind of sometimes you have to do the possession thing sometimes if you don't touch the item or clasp it you could lose it yes right and so those situations are sometimes few and far between as well um but you just trust me like if you garage sale as long as tanya has or i have things happen and it will really make you mad sometimes. <laughs> like just things will happen. You'll be like, yes. why didn't I pick that up? Why didn't I see that first? Like things will happen. Some people will snake things right from under you, you know? Right. So, you had an incident that happened to you not too long ago, right? I did. When the, mm -hmm. when the green room admins were in town, uh, I had a bike that I was trying to make a decision on. I had my hands on it. Oh like, my gosh. <laughs> it had a lock on it though. It had a lock in a really bad position and a lock that they couldn't find the key for. But I'm sitting here holding on to it because I'm like, oh, there's still potential in this. There's a little <laughs> bit of meat on the bone. But they were trying to call someone that was in Paris, like, do you have the lock? Where is it in the house? And I was waiting for that call to come through or the text to come through, like, I can't find the key. And that was going to be my way I was going to talk the bike down. But, of course, some guy comes along and he's like, hey, that's a pretty cool bike. And he looks at the lady goes, how much for that bike? And the lady goes, well, it's 50. And he's thinking about buying it. And the guy goes, I'll give you 60 right now for it. Oh. The lady looks at me and my hands are on this bike. And she goes, I'm sorry. And I'm like, you can have it. So, wow. yeah, that those things kind of happen. But it's not very often. And um, it doesn't mean that, oh, I'm a bad negotiator or anything like that. Trust me, like I've done enough garage sales. I know what I'm doing. But just sometimes people will just go over and beyond to really bend the rules of garage sales. They will just yeah. go crazy. No etiquette. <laughs> zero etiquette. Yeah, man, like zero. But that's okay because uh, the hustler gods blessed me later down the road that day with something right. even better without a lock on it too. It was a bike. <laughs> um, so if you like something, don't show it. Of course, when the competition is getting kind of crazy, then you might have to do the possession thing. Yes. Um, so ask the price, but try not to try not to hold on to the item. You know, it's important. Like, hey, how much for the frisbee? You know, lot down there. Um, you know, but do you want, you don't want to be anywhere around it. You mm -hmm. want to be kind of closer to them. Like, how much for the frisbee lot down there? Like, which one are you talking about? Oh, the one like way over there. Oh, I yeah. don't know. You know, if you hear that, oh, I don't know. Uh, pff, and you hear stalling right. and stuff, then that's <laughs> probably going to be a pretty decent price. Yeah. Um, but if you hear an immediate price like um, ten dollars, you know, then if you're like, damn, I really wanted it for like five or something you yeah. can negotiate further so we're going to talk about that here in a second so if the price is visible on the item tanya what mode do you go into like you come up to an item you want it but the price is already on it what what starts going on in your head um well first of all you know i gotta decide how much i really want the item um, and you know the condition of it and everything like that if it's something that I really really want I know I can make a whole lot of money off, off of it I'll probably just pay it straight up, you know hold it in my hands until I'm done shopping the sale But if I think I can get it for lower five, I might offer two or three. It just depends really on what the item is Is that what you meant? <laughs> no, I'm not, I for some reason I got sidetracked because uh, garage flips put a comment in there and the comment feed was super funny um, but anyway, so you're saying that if you see that price 
sometimes you don't even talk it down, right? Like you just buy it straight away. Now you're possessing it. You're in possession of the item, but right. the cash is already exchanged, right? Yeah. Does it ever occur to you that at what point do you go, I should start bundling things together? Or when you see something so good, you pay for it immediately. That way the transaction is done. Is that what's going on in your head? Oh, no, I'll definitely try to bundle things. Um, again, like if there are a lot of people at the garage sale, like, for example, a church garage sale. Um, I've been to many to where I get so much stuff in my cart that I have to go pay right then and, you know, take it out to my car and come back again because they're not going to hold stuff for you. But now, at a, you know, like a residential garage sale, you have to be careful also because if you're making a pile, like, I don't know about you, if I'm making a pile, I'm still shopping. I got one eye on what I'm looking at, the other eye on my pile, right? Because people will walk up and, you know, the seller might not be paying attention and somebody might grab your stuff. So you got to keep your eye on things. Yeah, that's right. It also helps if you go with somebody else as well. Like if you start <laughs> going with someone else, then sometimes you can kind of hold the pile together like as you go around right. the garage sale. So I might have an unfair advantage in that respect, but I do go with my brother and we try to, kind of half half most of the things that we find so if you do bring someone else with you and they're doing work with you cut them in on the deal like you know yeah, a little I bit take agree. them out to dinner or something with the money that you make or whatever like you know make it worth their time because nothing sucks worse than like joining and like having fun and then be like uh where's my like i didn't make any exactly you know? <laughs> so teach your kids teach your loved ones um and it's fun. Like garage selling is just fun. It doesn't take a terrible amount of time. Uh, you're outside talking to people. It's social. Right. Um, and don't forget to reward yourself at the end. But that's a side the fact of this show. Um, so now um, <clears throat> I like how Tanya said that if a price is really good enough, you buy it, right? And um, now here, here's kind of a caveat to that. So if this is this happened last weekend. The price was so good on this one thing right here. And I actually have it right here. So I'll show it to you guys. But this was three dollars. Okay. Now the reason I have it, I'm put, probably putting this up on eBay today. But uh, essentially, this was three bucks. It's a world. No, no. I keep saying it's a World War II. It's not. It's a vintage Swiss Army backpack. Yeah, okay? I saw that. So it's really pretty. It's made out of hard can. It's just beautiful, right? This thing is probably going to command north of a hundred bucks all day. I bought it for three bucks. The lady was like three bucks, and I was like, oh my god, like three dollars couldn't have like flown out of my hands fast enough. But I didn't say, oh my god. Like I was just like, oh three. Okay, Ch -ch -ch -ch. gone. And then mm -hmm. I would look at Emerson, my brother, and I was like, Emerson, we got to go. We have to leave. <laughs> he's like, why, why, why? I'm like, right. we got to get out of here. Like, mm -hmm. Because when, when the price is so good, and a lot of times this happens on things like bikes or video games or things like that. Mm -hmm. When the price is so good, each and every moment that passes by is a moment that that, price, that thing could be whisked away or someone comes out of the house and they're like, how's the garage sale going, honey? And they're like, I just sold your backpack for three bucks, you know? And yeah. that is a terrible thing. You don't want to be in that situation. I've been in that situation before. It is not fun. Yeah, you me get too. An amazing deal. You want to sometimes make a decision. Do I, do I hover around, stay here, and the chances of me losing this thing kind of increase a little bit? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to bolt and get out of here, right? Right. I agree. That's uh, definitely happened to me before. Tell me about that, Tanya, real quick. So it's definitely happened to you before, as in like you left quickly or you you stayed around and the, something happened to the price? Well, a lot of times, like especially with books and CD, you know, media type stuff, I'll ask, well, how much just for everything? And I do it also with jewelry too. And, um, you know, the husband, for example, might be out there and he'll say, you know, $10 for everything. And like you said, well, here comes... Here comes the wife with the coffee out of the kitchen, you know, and she's like, what? You just sold all that? No, you know, so you you have to, you want to get the deal and get out of there. You know, come back an hour later if you have to or want to, but get that good deal and, and get out of there. That's true. If you look at one of my ride-along videos about three weeks ago, I go to a little sale at the very end of the day on a Saturday, and we find this cool stuff. It was like a Star Wars book, a Delta faucet, um, a written wax cotton jacket and there was something else in that deal too like the delta faucet sold for good money like i originally walked out with a five dollars for that entire deal and i was like oh my god and i'm sitting there filming and like we're filming right on the back of the truck bed and everything and this lady walks up she's like oh i heard that you um bought that for five bucks yeah i'm um, some of that stuff is my stuff and we're diving the garage sale so um you know you owe me five dollars because you know how sometimes ladies do garage sales, but it's like, yes. what color is that one? Okay, that goes to yes. her, and that this one Our goes initials, to that one. Our initials, yeah. Yes. And so 
I didn't run fast enough and I should have. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're sitting there like we, we're content creators. We have to film this stuff so we can put it on YouTube later on. And that does make me hover around the sale a little bit. The second it starts getting piled into the car, the last mm -hmm. thing I want to do is unpilot and like video it somewhere down the street. I agree. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yes. So things can happen in garage sales. When you get a great deal and it's so good, you need to go like, usually you need to get out of there pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, College Picker was with me one time uh, about a year ago, and we went to a garage sale, and this uh, there was this awesome longboard on the ground, or a really good one. And uh, I asked the kid, I was like, how much for the longboard? And then the dad was right next to the kid, and the dad looks, well, it's your longboard. What do you want to sell it for? And the kid's like, 10 bucks. And the dad's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and he goes, okay, okay, 30 bucks. And I'm like, dude, this is still like a really good deal. <laughs> so I whip out 30 bucks really quickly. I'm like, cool. Thanks for it. And then somehow a college picker brings it out to like the street starts messing around with it. I'm like, whatever, but we didn't leave fast enough. Right. And uh -oh. sure enough, the mom comes out or someone else comes out like, wow, you sold your, your skateboard. Cool. How much? 30 bucks. Ooh, that was a bad idea. Um, yes, yeah, sir. Let me, uh, that was not supposed <gasps> to go down like that. Um, I need to have the longboard back. And I was like, Oh my uh, gosh. And like the same, like while that's going on, college picker, Eric is like doing like a 180 in like the driveway <laughs> and skidding it. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is very awkward. <laughs> I, I, I found, I found, that was the only thing I wanted in that garage sale. And I was going to throw it on Craigslist for like 120 bucks. And of course that's how we make money, things like that. Yeah. You know? So, um, you know, and people were like, well, you take advantage of a little kid. It's not like the dad was there supervising it. Yeah. But the mom thought it was even worth more than the dad thought. So anyway, it was just really weird. So when you negotiate, <laughs> you get a great deal, just try to get out of there. It's very important. Right. Um, because once you're out of there morally, it doesn't matter anymore. Like what happens? Right. They don't have your number. They can't That's find right. you. <laughs> That's right. They just have your license plate and uh, the general direction your car went. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had anyone follow me. Yet. I haven't either. No. <laughs> so that's good. Um, okay. So let's talk about, uh, here's another thing about negotiation I wanted to bring up. So if you're thinking about the price and you look, you know, looking like you're contemplating, is really an interesting kind of thing to do while it's, it's it's like subliminal negotiation it's like negotiation that has zero words attached to it when you're <laughs> silent and you're kind of like eh, hmm, hmm you know that can get kind of uncomfortable for the other other person because now they're like well you don't want my item like what's wrong with it like you know why don't you want to bring this thing home it's a great deal and if you right. say like, hmm, ah, hmm, the more times you can do that and get silent and play that card You'd be surprised what they say. It could be like a $10 item. And you're like, ah, mm, well, how about five? You ever had that happen? Like, you know, you sit there, but if yeah. you want to just pay 10 bucks, or even be like, how about eight? You know? So you got to play the, uh, the, mm, ha, mm, so, you know, silence card a little bit. Uh, you ever do that, Tanya? <clears throat> um, yeah, sometimes. Definitely. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting card to play. I play it um, when there's definitely no one around. <laughs> If yeah. there's no competition around, I can play that card pretty good. Um, and E-Money, my brother, like, we'll hum ha each other, like, looking at each other, like, hmm, ha, I don't, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> and he'll do the same thing, like, ah, oh, start breathing all weird. And right. the person that's looking at this whole thing going down, which is basically a show at this point, because I mean, my brother yeah. and I are just, like, egging off each other, like, I don't know, man. <laughs> And uh, the person always goes, well, what would you offer? Or, like, how about this? And so that right. uncomfortable silence and the hum ha's, <laughs> a very important thing to kind of try out. So yeah. think about it for a second. And it's not just something that, um, oh, I just found out about it last weekend. Trust me, I've been doing this for like forever. Um, right. I had something happen to me recently. I was at a garage sale and I love to pick up the lava lamps. So lots of times I'll keep them, but sometimes I'll put them in my booth and they were really good ones. And so I asked the guy, I said, how much, you know, for both of these lamps here? And he said 15. And I was like, mm. Would you do five? And he said yes. He was like totally okay with five bucks, five bucks for that. So, yeah. So you pulled the hmm card, huh? I did. It's it's a good <laughs> card to pull. It's fun. It's just fun because it just shows that you are in control of your money. Yep, you have you the power. You, you have power, and you're not impulsive. <laughs> right. um, impulsive is what kills people, man. That, that's the worst thing. Um, okay, so now that, let's talk about something. Um, if there's no, I mean, there's all kinds of people in the feed right now. What's up, peeps in the feed? I see you all. Jerry T. Hey, Chris and Tanya. Great show as always. 
I need a diversion while taking care of my very sick 17 year old kitty cat. Thanks for the info. Aww. I hope your cat gets better. Um, yeah, me too. Nothing better than pets out there. Pets are always, what's the most interesting thing about pets is they're just so centralized around their owners. Like they're yes. just happy to see their owners, always happy, happy, happy. You're their whole world. Is that you're the entire world that they have and they can't vocalize like anything outside like pain mm -hmm. or like you just have to know pets and your dogs. Right. Like, to figure out what they're trying to tell you. And it's, it, they are communicating, trust me. And um, also, in addition, pets are a great way to establish a rapport when you're walking up to a garage sale too, because oh, yeah. I don't know about you, but I am a big animal lover. And, um, you know, if there's a dog there and I don't know what kind it is, I'm going to want to talk about it and, you know, show the dog some love and pet it. So it's a great way too, to establish that relationship. Yeah, if you have a dog phobia, probably don't want to do that. But if you do, if you have a non dog non dog phobia like Tanya, then you'll be just fine. Um, yeah. <laughs> don't go to pet like yeah. I don't. I've, I've never found a weird dog at a garage show that like offsets the entire tone. Like they're all nice dogs. You notice that? Yes. Always nice dogs. Um, okay, so if there's no competition around, things start start to change a little bit. Um, you can yeah. if there's no competition around and your plans. A little bit more open meaning maybe it's the tail end of the day and it's not rapid fire like neighborhood wide garage sale season so it's like mm -hmm. garage sale garage sale garage sale garage sale it's like garage sale maybe like a couple miles garage sale so if there's no competition around and you're you have a split second to spare down there i like to do things like ask an item if uh, ask the person if the item works if it's an item that needs batteries or something like right does it work does it work properly you know at that point, if the person knows it doesn't work properly or the, the tape in the boom box doesn't work right, they're morally obligated to tell you that thing. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> You're not going to find someone like, oh, just like totally lie about it. And then you come home. Even though that's happened to me, it's very like if you go, does this thing work properly? If you do know that it doesn't, now you have like to say it, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Also, if there's no competition around, you may want to test the item, right? So yeah. it's not really negotiation based, but this is more like if it doesn't test out, then you can talk the price down, okay? Or if something's not met, not working right, you yeah. know, like you're with a camcorder and you're trying to get the tape to eject and stuff, and while broken camcorders still sell for good money, yeah. it's like a different tier. It's like a broken one, 30, 40 bucks, a working one, 80 to 100 plus. So yeah. you have to start you know, if you have some time, test the item out or like ask him, does this thing work properly? If the guy tells you, eh, it ejects kind of funny sometimes. So you should start be thinking, all right, this is broken category on eBay. Like that's the first thing right. that should come to your head. Definitely. And you the should more, be thinking prices. Yeah. You know? The more things that are wrong with it, the more that works to your advantage. Yeah. That's right. And the less the price will be. Exactly. Um, so play the issue as an advantage and use silence a lot too. That also works a lot with like an item that you know has issues. Silence and the hum ha is like, really work well because the person realizes that okay like i'm either donating this thing or i can get a couple bucks from this dude with you know yeah <laughs> so um okay so let's um go into the feed for one second uh i want to <laughs> milo jimmy's in the feed by the way tanya yes hey jimmy john what's up jimmy john um if the item is covered in dust and says, yeah, it works, it's brand new. <laughs> yeah, sometimes people are going to say some things that just doesn't. Oh, I've had a lot of instances where items aren't described properly. And I don't yeah. know if the owner knew it or not. That's the problem, right? Because sometimes yeah. in garage sales, you'll take neighbor stuff to yours. and That's uh, other true, people, yeah. And you just don't know the whole story. So I've had it happen. Um, and it's just part of the game, right? If you're buying low enough... You're, you should be able to hedge those things. Yeah. Um, now, that's the most. I want to ask you about this statement real quick, Tanya, and you tell me what you think about it. You make your money when you buy. You ever heard this before? I have. Yep. So explain that to the people out there in the feed. Like, what exactly does that mean? Um, well, I guess you're pretty much establishing your profit, like what you're going to make, right? Because if I buy an item for a dollar, right, and then I sell it for 15, uh, you know, I've made fourteen dollars profit, right? Is that what you mean? <laughs> kind of, yes. It, it's, it's essentially like you make your money when you buy. Like if the item that you're looking at is ten bucks, and it has a resale of fifteen, let's say for example. Now, each and every increment you, that you can talk down the item, you've just put that money in your pocket, essentially, right? So if the ten dollar item suddenly becomes five, 
and then you do some hmm ha's and freaking silence and then it becomes three and then you realize it's the end of the day and you can play that card it becomes <laughs> one well now you've just taken your potential profit of five dollars right now you have 14 you've you've put an extra nine bucks in your pocket because you make your money when you buy the item when you buy the item and depending on how good your negotiation is depends on how much money you put how much roi you get at the, in the end or how much almost insurance you can buy from the item yes insurance meaning like if you get home and something's wrong if you've done a really good job negotiating you should be able to at least like not wash clean but sometimes if you're like okay i'm just going to donate this like that's happened to me i'm not mm -hmm. worried about it right yeah but i start getting worried if i bought it for 20 bucks i'm like oh i'm just gonna donate now i'm like ah but that's 20 bucks yeah but if i'm buying it for like a five bucks a dollar three bucks like i don't care like it just doesn't matter anymore yeah i feel the same way yeah so you make your money when you buy that's the very that's the such an important that's one of the most important reasons why you got to negotiate and there's that fine line between what tanya said earlier and what i do all the time which is like if you find an item that's like a great deal like why didn't you just talk the three dollar back back down to two bona fide because sometimes you don't need to right yeah. sometimes i don't want to say it like this but sometimes the gr there's too much greed in trying to get too much money right there's just too like if a deal is good enough and it's way below like what it should have been like you should just buy it and go like you should just right if it's a you know you ever seen like the uh plastic bags full of like uh, like a super nintendo plus games and controllers oh, it's always yeah. in a plastic <laughs> bag for some reason i don't know why yes and you see a couple controllers you see the unit and then it's like five dollars on the side like your last thing think you the last thing you should be thinking is like let me just delve through this bag and like see what else yeah, is. no you should be thinking like a broken system with two controllers like you know 40 yeah. bucks already like who cares whatever else is in the bag mm -hmm. just buy it and go with it you know it's in the bag because moms have to be organized right with everything <laughs> in baggies always a white plastic <laughs> bag at least here in austin i see a white plastic bag with video games like not all the time but when it is a really good score it's always in a white plastic bag i don't get it <laughs> um so yeah, you know, it doesn't mean talk down everything with negotiation. It, negotiation is kind of like that art of figuring out how low you can get the item for. But if it's way low and a too amazing of a price, you got to understand it's time to go. Like it's time to buy and it's time to like go to your next sale. Yes. So anyway, um, okay. Oh, Malo Jimmy says I've get I've yet to see it at a garage sale. I run into all the other guys at the time at the same time all the time, like meaning green rumor guys in Houston, but he never sees you because you're in the other place, right? Yeah, I'm in League City, Jimmy John. He knows that. I've ran into him over there at a Goodwill on his side of town before. So I have, I have someone in Austin representing right now. What's up, New Frontier Business? If you ever want to hustle, please hit me up. We'll do that. I'm getting hit like left and right, like on Facebook behind the scenes. Really? I think there's just like this huge influx of people coming into YouTube, like looking for how do I flip on eBay? Like, how do I do this? How do I, how can I make money from garage sales? And I'm getting hit all the time. Like, bonafide, I live in Dallas. I want to drive down to Austin. I want to ride with you. And it's like, you can't say no to any of them. But my schedule doesn't, it's not exactly like open right. all the time. You know? Tell them about the meetup. And, uh, I know, I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, it's tough because I want a relationship built sometimes first, you know. And I want them to ride along with me, see that it's the real deal. It can happen. We're all having fun and all this. And then, uh, and then it's like, if you want to join the green room, that's cool. Like, I think it's a good asset for people to have. And at the end of the show, I'm going to show you something that's in the green room that we have for free for the people in there. But I, I authorized a very substantial discount on this one thing that's really going to help you out. So it's coming in about 10 or 15 minutes. So just hang around. I'll tell you what it is. Okay. So let's talk about uh, Tanya. Um, this is an interesting thing. Tell me if you do this because I do this all the time. It's called the flip flop. Do you know what the flip flop is? No. <laughs> okay. It's not what you're thinking. I wonder if anyone out there in the feed knows what the flip flop is. What is a flip flop when it comes to uh, when it comes to negotiating? What do you think it is? I'm curious. Garage flips is saying, "Hey, Chris, you need to get a cheese wagon, dude. <laughs> I already have a cheddar mobile. I don't, I don't need it. I got the cheddar spaceship, man. But a cheese wagon <laughs> sounds heavier for some reason. Um, sounds like it's drawn by horses too. Um, faster." Garage Flips, it's good to see you though. Honestly, like you make great videos and uh, you definitely show a lot of stuff. And he has right. a really interesting way of like making, you ever watched Lonnie Garage Flips? Oh yeah, I love Lonnie. Like his shows are like really well done. Like they're just like, he, okay, his one of his last shows, I'm not even kidding. It seemed like there were 100 little- Oh uh, yes, 
Yes. You know what I'm talking about? I was watching that one. He was doing like a sales update. And Lonnie, let me just tell you right now, you have saved so many minutes of my life by teaching me how to open those tabs properly because I was going, I was doing it the long way. And he has, he simplified, he simplified my videos so much, so much more now. So thank you so much. I think that's his name, right? Lonnie with Garage Flips? Yeah, Lonnie. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Lonnie, uh, Ronnie is asking who is Lonnie? Well, Ronnie, Lonnie is <laughs> the person that's Garage Flips a channel yes. with <laughs> a thousand plus subscribers, something like that. Right. And he's been doing a show uh, called the Cajun Pickers too, once a week. Yeah. I think it was so, just the other day too. Yeah. Um, so, and by the way, if I do support other YouTubers, I'm going to tell you something that I do because sometimes, you know, I don't have all the time in the world to watch all the videos in the world. And I wish I Yeah, did, I, I know. Me too. Um, but what I'll do if I like you, I'll drop by and I'll give you a like and maybe a comment. Like, I just do that. Like, if I have other things to do, like if it could be Tanya's show, it could be anyone else's show, people in the green room, people that I like. If I like like the style of what I'm looking at, I'll just stop by, hit the like button, I'll say something real quick, and I got a jet. But I think it's better than not doing it at all, right? Yeah, I, I agree. That's the way I think about it. Definitely show some love. Yeah, for anybody that thinks like, oh, you're just saying hi because you want their subscribers, like, no, I don't. Like, I'm I'm doing good things by you know showing that i represent and you wouldn't just look at who i like and my liked videos and you'll see what i'm talking about you can yeah. see people what what they like i can see what you like tanya yeah on your youtube channel and so you're probably anyway. seeing all paul can too probably <laughs> maybe i well now i'm gonna start looking uh, <laughs> you got me all curious now um so let's talk about the flip-flop so the flip-flop i wonder if anyone has guessed it okay so no one's guessed it um a flip-flop is really interesting. This strategy, when it deals with negotiating, works freaking miracles. It has to do with male versus female, all right? The flip-flop means if you have an item in your hand and it's a female kind of oriented <laughs> item, you go to the male for the pricing. Yes. You have a male item in your hand, you know, you go to the female for the pricing. It's a flip-flop. Very clever. Yeah, it's super clever. And trust me, like, it really, really works really well. Why? <laughs> because sometimes males just don't associate much value to things that are not just their stuff. Like, and then females, the same time, they're just like, oh, my God, like, if I could just get rid of my husband's stuff. Like. <laughs> so you get these kind of things going on. And this is these are real, real, like, things that are going on in garage sales. It, you know, if you're bringing the female item to the female, you know, you're probably going to get a markup. Yeah. If you bring it to the male... And the female is not there. Sometimes I'll wait for the, like the female to like kind of be preoccupied or something <laughs> like that, or vice versa. Yeah. Or if the male like walks to the garage and like, oh my god, here's my chance to go get the lacrosse helmet, you know. So I'll do things like that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it, right? Because the price yeah. is the price. Like, uh, but that's just a technique that you can do. It's called the flip flop. Yeah. I coined that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> don't you be ripping it off? No, I don't care. Right? You guys can rip it off. I don't care. Um, it's a really good strategy. Um, there's another strategy called bundling. Like I said, we can't, we can't do all this in one show. It's like impossible. So bundling is very, when people think of bundling, I think a lot of people think American Pickers, that Frank guy, you know? Yeah. The shorter guy, you know, that's like always like, bundle, 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 right? <laughs> um, do you, you bundle a lot, Tanya, right? Um, yeah, if it's not a really big sell, I will. Yeah. Like a lot of times when I go to garage sales, first thing in the morning, say it's like 7, 7.30 in the morning, you know, I might be there before a lot of other people show up and, um, you know, there's lots of good stuff to be had. So I'm just handing the person having to sell stuff left and right, uh, getting my little pile going and, you know, getting all the good stuff as fast as I can. Yeah. Do you show up to a garage sale? Like I was at a garage sale this morning. It was like a church benefit sale. But the weirdest part about this church benefit sale is it was in a house. So I've never been to a church benefit sale that's been in a house before, right? Yeah, that's weird. So people were like waiting in line and that was like number six. And I looked behind me, I was like, whoa, there are like 30 people behind me. Um, and I only got there like 10 minutes earlier. So we're all waiting and I hate waiting in lines. But uh, I noticed <laughs> that the people in front of me like had sacks on their shoulder, like mm -hmm. totes almost, right? Yeah. You're gonna, never going to find me with a tote. I'm not, I'm not, I just don't do You're totes. You're not a tote guy? <laughs> no. I don't do totes. I want to pick up the hardest hitting items and that's it. All this other room stuff, I'm, forget it. Like, I just want to pick up, I want to pick up the, the, the cheddar hits that are worth my time and I'm gone. Um, and that's what I did. Um, but man, there's some people that are just totes that are big, like Ikea yeah. totes. You never seen those blue things? Oh, from yeah. Ikea? I get a little buggy whenever I go, to, especially to the church garage sales. Oh, I, will... God, I thought you meant you go to a buggy with a buggy to a garage sale. <clears throat> 
No, 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 no. The church okay. sells out well. Like I'll pull, I have a little rolling cart. I also have a buggy too, but um, yeah, I definitely take my cart with me because it can hold a lot of heavy books. And lots of times when I'm grabbing books, they get really heavy fast. So I like to have my uh, cart with me. Okay. So you do carts when it comes to sales where you're probably going to be perusing a quite a bit, right? Yes, definitely. Okay. So that's a cart. What is a cart? Is it a folding kind of thing? What is, is it the wire looking one or is it the one with the, the black foldable black basket at the end of it? Well, I've got a couple different ones. Um, the small one that I use for my books, like you can just go buy at Office Max or somewhere, but it's like just like a black box square and it has um, a real long handle on it and you can make it shorter if you want and it rolls. And then my other one is just, um, it's like a black, like a buggy cart. And um, it's really useful too. I use it in the summertime to go to the uh, pool with my kids. We put all our stuff in there. So it does double duty. It's an actual cart? Yeah. Does it fold? Yeah, it collapses. Okay, and you put this in your SUV? Yes. Okay, so you can, okay, I get it, I get it. That's pretty cool. Does it have like four wheels or three? It's, or? Got, it's got four wheels and it's really handy too for my antique booth uh, because oh, I'm always carting okay. stuff in, yeah. Okay. I don't have to make so many trips. That's a good, that's a, definitely a way to look like a reseller though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm hardcore. If you, if you have a cart, I think people figure out what you're doing. Um, yeah, I don't mess around. <laughs> yeah, but the, one of the best things about bundling, right, Tanya, is sometimes they're like, yeah, yeah, put stuff in a bundle, right? And you only kind of find out that you can put stuff in a bundle after like, how do I say it? You find a lot of things or how much is this? How much is that? How much is this? Like that gets really repetitive and that's kind of stupid. Like you want to, if you right. find a lot of things that you kind of want, like you're like, you come to a garage sale or, you know, one of these big church sales and you're like, I right. know I'm going to find a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm sitting there going, how much is that thing? How much is that thing? How much is that thing? Like no. that's the wrong thing to do. Yeah. I'm just Tanya, handing it. Yeah. I'm just handing it to the seller or um, making my pile where they told me I could put things and then we'll negotiate after I'm done shopping. Yeah, that's right. And you want to negotiate with the person that like really looks very less involved with the whole entire operation. <laughs> if you try to like negotiate with the person that's like, okay, everything has to run by me and my little right. like cash drawer. Then it's like, yeah. Go to the person get... without the fanny pack. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then you'll get a really good deal. Get to get to someone that you know wouldn't know about the items that are in your pile, right? You don't go yeah. to the sporty looking dude if you got a bunch of sporty look stuff in mm -hmm. your like go to the person that does not look like they care about sporty stuff. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just, it's just. I wouldn't say it's basic. It's it's kind of like you'd be surprised how many little things you can pull out of your pocket. There's so <laughs> many ways to negotiate out there. I'm telling you guys. Um, but bundling is definitely one of those good things. Um, I like your card idea. That's pretty interesting because almost every time that I'm at one of those situations where there's a lot of items and I know I'm going to find a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. they have that kind of centralized location in the front where everyone exchanges money and you get to walk out, but they All have right. holding areas, right? Yes. And if you're at the far end of the sale and you're like, dang it, I don't have a cart. Like I got to go back to the holding area and drop this off. Then I go back out there and like drop mm -hmm. that off at the holding area. That's wasting time. So I like your cart idea. Yeah. I might have to get myself a little cheddar cart, man. Yeah. You need a cheddar cart, Chris. I do. <laughs> I'm actually going to put a piece of cheese, like a cutout of it on the front. <laughs> man. I'm telling you, like I don't play around. Um, there are a lot of people, there, all the people in Austin that seem to know who I am are usually uh, pretty much in the green room. Like they just know me. Does that happen yeah. to you often? Like when you go to a yeah. garage sale? All the time. Really? I've never had <laughs> that happen time. to me at a garage sale. All never. the time I see green rumors at, at garage sales. And stuff. It's just, it's fun. It's fun. And I, I don't ever, you know, we, we share what we found and stuff. And there have been times where I've been like, mm, like, dang it. You know, like, <laughs> right? me, but there's enough for everyone out there. That's just one of those things. I, I don't ever is, get irate. Yes. I don't ever get like, dang it. Like, why did I create the green room? Like, I don't <laughs> ever get like that. I just get. Yeah. I don't know. There's enough for everyone. There really is. And it comes down to when you showed up. If you if someone beat you to something, you should have woken up earlier. You should have planned better. Like Yeah, I agree. You know, it's just what it is. Do you ever run into people like you run into resellers every now and then, right? Um sometimes. I mean, but then again, I can also just kind of tell when I see a reseller, especially like with the books, if they got their phone out, they're like scanning. I, I know what yes. you're doing. <laughs> yes. You're so. right. This morning when I was in a garage sale, like they finally opened the doors to the house. That's a church garage sale. And the lady's like, every room's got a theme. And then like the backyard's got backyard stuff. And there's like a child theme in this room. And I'm like, I'm not going to that room. Right. <laughs> I saw through the windows the room I wanted to be in, right? And so I'm like racing around. And I'm not racing. I'm not like elbowing anybody or anything like that. <laughs> I'm going through there, right? Um, and uh, this guy, I get around the CD area and I'm like in the clothing area and then like the 
the, the used modems area, right? That's every, that's every garage yes, sale, you'll find yes. a used modems area <laughs> of modems that no one cares about, <laughs> guaranteed. <Exactly. laughs> or a coffee machine area of basic coffee machines that no one cares about. Um, mm -hmm. Don't be buying those things, by the way. Uh, but this guy comes up to the CD area and he looks at, it. I was going to put this in the green room because there's a, there's a big learning experience to this thing, but I'm going to show it. I'm going to share it with you guys real quick, but he goes to the CD area. He's a kind of a hefty dude and he's got glasses and he does the whole, like, I don't know. Like sometimes I don't, people like they put down the glasses, put them up. I don't know if it's because they magnify different ways. Right. Is that yeah, what it is? like bifocals or something? Yeah. Bifocals or something like that. Right. He's sitting there like, uh, uh, like this. And he goes, <laughs> Oh my gosh, $2 for a CD. Pff, I'm out of here. And I was like, dang, this guy must be a reseller. He looked because he went right for the CDs. Like, directly for them and there are certain resellers that are like that they'll go straight to the books they'll go straight to the cd straight to the media straight to the you know whatever right but i'm like dude and he just like left the garage sale i'm like you are going to garage sales in the city of austin on a friday only looking for cds like this is a really really bad yeah you know, like <laughs> learn some Definitely. other things man like i didn't tell him anything but you know <laughs> it got me thinking i was like gosh yeah. You know, you could be He's your own worst him. enemy. Yeah. You can be your own worst enemy if you don't learn how to negotiate, if you don't know about items to resell. You could easily be capping yourself off. Like, yeah. I don't I don't limit myself in, in any area. I, I sell all things. So um, yeah, and, I, and I'm learning about a lot of the sporting equipment from you as well. Stuff that I never even would have thought to pick up, like the backpack you showed it earlier. Yeah. So that's a great find. Did you see the golf post I put in the room the other day? Not the golf post, but the Innova Innova Frisbee thing. Yes, yes, I did. So those things were crazy. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I put posts in the room every now and then about random stuff that I'm thinking about or I, how do I say it? Markets that I'm trying to get better at mm -hmm. and I'll share with people like what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. But it's very important to, uh, you know, understand that negotiation is so important. Like if you're not trying to hone in and every weekend practice your negotiation skills, you are probably charging you are probably missing out on 10 or i would say anywhere between 10 and 30 percent more money every year right honestly like if you're not negotiating you're costing yourself 10 or 20 30 yeah and you have nothing to lose you're never going to see these people again yeah so. well some of them you do well you might you never do. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 year after year, I go to certain garage sales. We're like, "Hey, what's up? You're back." I'm like, right? oh, "Man, this guy knows the same the people." Seller. Yeah, the same people yeah. always have sales. And like so. the last, this happened when Eric and Steve were in town. But I went to a garage. Sale. I'm like, "Oh God, I know this guy." So like, I walked out, and he's like, "Hey, what's up? How are the video games?" And I'm like, "Which one's that bike?" And I was like, "Okay, okay, I got it." You know, <laughs> I was like, "Those, okay." And then I was like, "Man, how's everything?" Whoa, you have a kid now, you know? And like, one year passes by, and so many things change, and that's one of those opportunities. Like Tanya was saying, sometimes there's a little bit. Of, there's some time for small talk, and sometimes there's some time for other talk. Yeah. Maybe you like what's in their garage, like a really cool classic car. Maybe you like the tree that's in their yard, or like their house and the property. Sometimes there's a, you know, life is not all about money and like hauling ass everywhere. It, sometimes yeah. it's about building relationships. Um, because I remember that when I got those video games from that guy, they weren't at the garage sale. We were talking about stuff, and he was, and he eventually asked me the question, "What are you looking for today?" And I was like, you know, Nintendo games. Uh, I mean, not Nintendo. I said video games, just nothing Atari because that's what I always say. You know, when I say nothing Atari, then they start realizing that's pretty much everything out there. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't care about Atari. I really don't. But uh, he was like, I got some stuff in the back. Maybe you'll like it. And that's what led that. But, uh, you know, if I had just been like, how's the weather? Cool. All right. See you later. Like, I would never right. got to that conversation. Yeah. So sometimes you have to slow down. Tanya, do you ever slow down? Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, what is when you slow down? What is it? Is it a dog? Is it a, a lemonade stand? Is it some cookies? What is it that like? All of the above. <laughs> okay, so everything. Yeah, and not too long ago, I went to a garage sale, and they had I like the Doors, um, the band, and so they had like this, um, and it was theirs. They weren't selling it, but this like big like framed uh, picture, and it had like a record in there. It's in one of my ride-alongs. I filmed it, and it was just really neat to see something like that. And you just, you run into all kinds of people and the things that you're going to see. Like you said, even if they're not selling it, you know, you can check it out and see what they have. Yeah. That was one of my negotiation things too, is asking about other stuff that's not in direct sight. Yes. Or might not be for sale. Um, so not in direct sites like the video game thing, right? Or when was the last time something that wasn't in direct sight, but you asked about it and it was there? Like Tanya, do you, okay. can you recall something where that happened? Yeah. It happens every time I go to a garage sale. So I always ask, you know, do you have any jewelry or books? If they're not out, I'll, especially the jewelry, I'll ask. So really? um, and the jewelry comes through with some random stuff sometimes. 
sometimes, not too often, or a lot, I'll get a lot of, um, oh, I forgot to go through the jewelry, you know, type thing. But it doesn't hurt to ask. I mean, ask. Isn't it amazing when they don't go through the jewelry, but they bring it out anyway? Yeah. <laughs> and now you're like, ooh. Yeah, because they didn't priced. take the time to, yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I love that. That's a good feeling. That That is... When they bring yeah. it out and you know they haven't thought about the price and say or anything. it quietly. Shh, say it quietly because you don't want people around you to hear it, right? <laughs> yeah, don't bullhorn the jewelry, the jewelry <laughs> thing. Um, yeah, and some other things that are uh, maybe – you can ask about other things that are in sight. I've won many th amazing scores just by, hey, you know, what about the bikes in the garage? And clearly the garage sale is outside of the garage. Like I'll be like, what about those – are the bikes for sale? You know, um, the other two weekends ago, is that wakeboard for sale on the, oh, no, but it can be. I was like, oh, yeah. Cool. And it ended up in my hands moments later. But so that's a very interesting thing that you can do as well. Um, of course, when it's just uh, flying from garage sale to garage sale, then sometimes you have to go a little quicker. But just remember that that's, that's out there. So I did want to um, take a second, and uh, we have 93 viewers in the house. Guys, first link down below is Tanya's channel. So go check that out on YouTube, uh, Thrifty Treasures. And that channel has got ride-alongs, got garage sale stuff, jewelry finds, all kinds of stuff. Um, go check out her channel. So that is the very first link. Um, the second link, and I'm going to talk about this right now. Oh, by the way, Tanya, do you have... Talk about all the, all the other stuff that you are involved with, uh, the stew, some other things. Tell the people yeah. how they can link up with you real quick. Okay. So um, Deb and a bunch of my other friends, we do a show once a week called The Reseller Stew. And you can watch us on Tuesdays at noon on Pinching Pesos channel. And then I have a couple of groups on Facebook as well. Uh, my jewelry group is called Jewelry, Gold, Silver, Bakelite, and More. And I have a um, reseller group. It's called Third Coast Resellers and Beyond. And, um, of course you can find me, um, you can friend me on here on Facebook. It's thrifty, Tre thrifty treasures, Tanya. Um, I'm on, uh, Twitter and Instagram, thrifty treasures. Cool. I'm everywhere. Carolina, you are everywhere. <laughs> Can't escape Tanya guys. She's going to find you. Um, <laughs> okay. So <laughs> there was one thing I wanted to get to real quick. So you are a part of the green room. Yes. Uh, you've been like one of the most OG people we've had. You're like in the first yes. 100, I want to say. Yes. Members. So you have a, the price that you pay is the price that we'd never offer anybody else anymore. So I'm grandfathered in. You're grandfathered <laughs> in. Um, and you've met some terrific people through there. Oh, yes. Amazing. And it's been so much fun. I love it. Yeah, it is. And we've done Houston. I've been to a Houston meetup. I hosted one. You showed up. Um, yeah. A bunch of people showed up. And then you have gone to three of our meetups, maybe, right? I think think that's right. Yeah. Three of our actual. Yeah, because we meetups. did one at Christmas time too. Remember? Oh yeah, so maybe four actually. <laughs> You've been to a lot. <laughs> anyway, um, oh yeah, okay, so three, yes. Um, yeah. And it's a lot of fun getting around around a lot of resellers. You can make a lot of friends, and you can start. You know, you, you learn so much faster when you're around other resellers. You've also been with us when we've done the garage sale caravan. Oh my goodness, that is so much fun! I love that. Chaotic. Last year was so chaotic. I'm telling you, um, <laughs> the the admins usually we have fun, but it's not like it's a lot of planning, right? Um, but yeah, essentially, we take vans and mobs of people to garage sales yes. in Austin, and we just and, flood the garage sale. And everybody has to wait. You can't just like get out of your car and go. You have to oh, wait yeah. till everybody gets there. That's, That's the, the creepiest part about it for them. For the, like the sellers, <laughs> right? they see this like mob form in the street. I feel like, oh my god, what's going on? As soon as we're like, yeah, we're good, and we have our cameras rolling, like it just flood the sale, and then they're like, holy crap! Like it's pretty fun. Um, I think last year we only got three done and three is plenty when you're kind of moving around 30 to 50 people. Like it's a, yeah. it's a lot of sales, you know, it doesn't sound like much, but it is a lot. Maybe we went to four. Okay. Yeah. So you've been part of that and it's a lot of fun to be around a lot of people. Um, so one of the things I wanted to discuss with you guys out there is if you don't get a chance to meet up with a lot of people and you still want to learn a lot about garage sales and you would like a very clean, concise kind of thing where you could take your garage sale uh, education to the next level, or you really want to learn about the art of like making the deal, like how much money can you stand to make in garage sales? What's the real process behind the hustle? 
all that kind of stuff. I do have one thing today that I have severely discounted <laughs> for only 20 people who are lucky enough to hit the, the button and get it. So we have a guide. It's 27 bucks, okay? But I lowered it today to a 10 just for 20 slots. Um, it's the second link down below, and I'm going to show it to you for one second. It is free in the green room. So if you are a green room member, do not buy this. It is free <laughs> in the resources page. Do not buy it. But if, for anyone else that's not part of the green room and uh, maybe doesn't want to be in it or can't justify the green room and that's fine but you still want to up your garage sale game because let's face it we're in a very good season right now where garage sales will make you killer money yeah this guy that i'm about to show you has no fines in it like it doesn't have any bolos it's not going to show you what or to buy or anything like that it's going to show you really the process behind the madness and it's going to decipher it to where you really realize what's at stake and how to make a bunch of money from garage sales so let me screen share for one second i'm going to show it to you for a split second and then you guys can decide whether you want it or not it's not a huge deal but they're only 20 slots so um, i could have put infinity and let it sell forever at this price but i'm not we're not here to discount our goods that much but i'm doing it for because i like doing the show that's garage <laughs> show related and i i eat sleep breathe garage shows i love them they're fun so yeah. i've personally written a third of this guide and this is what it looks like present to everyone so there it is garage sale killer um that's what i i actually made that name how to make money from garage sales, the secrets revealed. Here we go, locate sales, prepare your day, how to negotiate when you get home with your goods, finding avenues, evaluating your kills, the ups and downs, mitigating risk and afterthoughts. And there's just so much information in here. It's an amazing guide. Um, it's got a lot of cool stuff. So anyways, check it out. And there's a, definitely some math-based stuff in there as well, that uh, college picker. I don't want to show you the whole thing, but there's a lot of cool stuff in the guide that I want you, uh, if you're interested in really taking your thing to the next level, your game to the next level, try to be one of those uh, 20 people. The guide right Love now the for cover. slots. I know. Isn't the isn't cover Dude, awesome? Uh, Glenn designed that. Glenn designed it. I told He's him. He's so I, awesome. I was like, I want money and I want a crime scene <laughs> and it's called Garage Sale Killer because that's what we do. You know, um, I don't think I have looked at that one. I'm going to go check that out. I thought you were talking about something different. So. Yeah, yeah, that's sitting in the guide section right now. It's not the guide section. It's called the resources section of... When did it drop? Or when did you put it out? We put it out. See, this is a guide that we never talk about. Like, we hardly ever talk about it because it's just one of the perks of being in the room. But it's been there for a year and a half now. So... Oh. Anyway, it's a oh, Cape Cod resellers as it says I own it. It's a good read. I review it every season. So there you go. Um, if you're in the green room, do not buy it. Um, anyways, Adam's Adam's negotiating with you there. He says he'll give you three dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Adam, that's that's funny. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's 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 basically it's way below fifty percent off right now. So I authorized only twenty slots. It's a second link down below. Right. Go check it out. It's a good deal. If you choose, you want to buy it, go for it. If you don't need it, not a big deal. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I did want to give you guys that are sitting here watching the show, trying to get value. Um, there's a good place to get a lot of value and it's in that guide. Yes. So it'll take about a good two hours to read it, maybe an hour and a half, something like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I look to the side cause it's like a beautiful day, but, um, <laughs> It it's a, it's, so a, it's a good guide. I remember where I was when I reviewed it and like proofed it and all this kind of stuff. And I was at a Starbucks and I sat there because I got to read the other two thirds of it that I didn't get to create. And I was like, gosh, this is like really, really well done. Yeah. I'm really proud of my, the, the admins. Um, so, um, you know, I didn't write the whole thing. I wish I did. Well, actually, I wish I didn't because <laughs> you know, it have never got produced because <laughs> it takes forever to like produce things these days. Right. Um, so anyway, uh, that's something that you guys can check out. And um, I'm going to do a show next Friday. Um, I hope Tanya, you can be there. That'd of be course, awesome. yeah. So we're going to do some of the uh, after, like once you buy the item and everything like that, um, like what you got to do after, you know? We're essentially giving you like a bird's eye view of really what's in that guide, but like we're elaborating on it. We're doing our personal stories on it. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, I really like having Tanya here because she goes to garage sales all the time. Yeah. So that's Thanks for having really me. Fun. Maybe we'll get one more person on the pan. I, if it gets too crowded, then it's like people talk over each other, but uh <laughs> I've garage sold with you. Um, I know like you really do go for jewelry a lot. I've noticed this when you go to a garage sale, I'll like zoom over to like the sporting goods and like all the electronics right. and all this random stuff. And you do go to that like small square, like jewelry table. Yeah. Like, you just start decoding little things. And yeah, I've got cool. my tools with me, my <laughs> magnet. And my... Do you have the little cream for Bakelite thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, I have some of that. I mean, I don't carry it with me, but usually plastic pieces like that, um, they're usually so cheap. I'll just pick them up and test them at home. You know what okay. I mean? 
Yeah. What's been a really good, we'll, we'll kind of cap off the, the show here. We're at the hour mark, but what's been a really good jewelry score? Um, talk about your best one and then talk about a more everyday kind of setup that you see out there that you're like, okay, this is repeatable. I've done this a million times. Okay. But talk about your best kind of jewelry score first. Um, well, I've had a few, but I'll start with my uh, most recent. Just this week, um, I had a couple pieces that I had been accumulating, like that I picked up in garage sales, and a couple pieces I picked up straight from the thrift store. And um, <laughs> I took it to my jeweler, and I flipped it there, and he gave me um, $455 in cash. <laughs> I was so excited. I left and went straight to the bank and deposited it. <laughs> Wow. So there is so much money to be made in jewelry. I mean, um, how much did you bring the person a pound and a couple, like eight ounces? How many ounces did you bring this person or what did you bring him? Well, well, it was different carrots of gold. Like there was some 18 carats some 14 carat and 10 as well. But my really big score was a necklace that I had purchased. And I think I posted this on my Facebook a couple weeks ago. It was a necklace and I paid $20 for it at one of the thrift stores and that piece alone was worth two hundred dollars. So how much did you pay for it again? I paid twenty, and it was worth. It was like eleven grams of uh, fourteen karat gold. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So if someone wants to learn and kind of decode jewelry a little bit, you definitely know your stuff between like plated and carats and like all that kind of stuff, right? I am definitely not an expert. I am always learning. Um, I learn stuff, new stuff all the time. So I'm um, definitely not an expert, but I would love to help any of you. If you have any questions, I can give you my best spin on it. Um, I will tell you something really interesting real quick. One of my friends um, I thrift with um, locally, he told me that a long time ago, I guess like when immigrants would come over here to America, that they would actually paint their jewelry, their gold, uh, lead color so that they wouldn't get robbed. And that was the most interesting thing to me. Have you ever heard this? No. Now you like maybe you want to look at like fishing lures and like, is this like a <laughs> piece of gold or something? Like? Right. You never know. But I thought That's that was crazy. interesting. Yeah. Hmm. So it's like a, a way to trick people. Yeah. So they wouldn't yeah. get robbed. Yeah. yeah. Not a baller. It's like wearing a t-shirt over like something really <laughs> expensive. Um, right. That's interesting. Um, so that's, you're good flips. What's a little bit more every day? Is it 925 uh, silver? Like you kind of find that every now and then? James Avery stuff, some Tiffany Yeah, stuff. well, James Avery is the exception. Definitely, okay. without a doubt. Because um, right now, if you want to sell your silver by the, you know, by the grams or whatever, you're not going to make a lot of money. You're better off trying to sell your silver individually right now. However, if it is James Avery, that is a winner every time. You want to sell that single individually on eBay. As a matter of fact, I have two pieces right now that I purchased in jewelry jars. I need to get listed and I'm hoping to make $60 or more off of each piece. So I'm really excited about that. Jewelry jars, you mean like a kind of like you put your hand in there and kind of fish around things? Like <laughs> oh, I wish I had one by me. Well, you know, like you'll see like, um, here's like, this is a, a bag of jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a lot of times, you know, you'll find them like in the glass uh, flower vases and it's just stuffed with jewelry. You know, they'll put anywhere from 10 to $25 on these bags. And sometimes you get lucky and find some good stuff. But, you know, with me, I also craft uh, with the pieces in there and I'll sell some of the pieces in my antique booth. So I've got all kinds of ways to move it. Okay. That's interesting. So let's cap off the show at this moment. Let's make sure people can find your jewelry group because this is really interesting things. And I just realized that my negotiation garage sales show is now transforming mysteriously into a jewelry <laughs> show. And I can't have that happening. So how do people find your jewelry thing again so they can like link up with you and start learning some of this? Stuff? Okay. It is called on Facebook. The group is um, jewelry, gold, silver, bakelite, and more. So and more. Okay. So jewelry, yeah. gold, silver, bakelite, and more. Okay. Got it. Awesome. And then if you're in the green room, you can find Tanya. You know her last name. Um, and Reseller Stew on, what day is it? Reseller Stew. What, was it Tuesday, Wednesday? Yes, it's on Tuesdays at noon. Tuesdays at noon, Pinching Pesos channel. And I guess if people want to meet you, they can go to some of your Third Coast Reseller meetup things or what? Yes, um, we do meetups and we've already had one. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Thelma Thrift came and Deb from Pinching Pesos and um, a bunch of other people. It was a lot of fun. We hit up um, a lot of the thrift stores and we all had lunch together afterwards. So lots of fun. 
and definitely reachable. So you can find our Thrifty Treasures on Facebook. You can find our Thrifty Treasures on Instagram, Thrifty Treasures on YouTube. It's the first link down below. Go check out our channel and you'll see her next Wednesday on, on the next Friday on my channel. We'll talk about more garage sale <laughs> stuff. Till then, guys, take it easy and we'll see you on the next Bye. show.